Invoice Manager. When you first click on either Invoice in the Select an Account section or on the Invoice tab, a wizard will open to walk you through creating a new invoice file. The first question asks whether you wish to import data from an existing Invoice Manager file. We will review this separately, so for now, just click on Next. Review your business name as you would like it to appear on the invoices, together with your business number if appropriate. Details recorded in other sections of the program will automatically appear, and any changes will appear across the whole program. Click on Next to continue. Record your street address and then click on Next. Record your postal address. If, if it is the same as your street address, simply click on the Use Street Address checkbox. Click on Next to continue. OK, you're finished. Click on Next. When you click on Next, your Invoice Manager account will be created. The customer list is the main window in the Invoices account and it includes a list of your customers. To the right of the customer list is a number of buttons for the common features undertaken in the program. Now before we look at these functions, let's personalize the Invoice Manager for our requirements. Firstly, let's click on the Options icon. As you can see, there are a number of options. For example, the Advanced Preferences allows you to relabel your customers. So if you call your customers by another name such as Client or Patient, type in the name you require. The Use Transfers option allows you to transfer cash receipts to Cashflow Manager in bulk to make it easier to manage your records. So if you have a lot of invoices where you are paid at the time of creating the invoice, I recommend you use that option. The print settings allow you to select to use a pre-printed letterhead or print your company details. You can also change the fonts and margins but I would not recommend doing this as it may cause problems in your layouts. The invoice layout settings allow you to select the default layout as well as add your logo and determine whether you want to include a remittance advice. You can customise this further if necessary, but for most people, these options should cover your needs. When you have made any changes and options, click on Save and then the Cancel button to exit options. You can do other things as well, such as add items of inventory to speed up the process of adding invoices, but for now we're going to just simply get started. Let's add a customer or client as we have now called them. Click on the Add Customer button or whatever you have renamed your customers. Type in a unique customer code and then add the customer details. You can also select the tax group to use with this customer. When completed, click on Save and New to add more or Save to save and exit. If you have an existing file of customers, suppliers or inventory, you can import them into your program, but you'll need to review the user guide or online help for details. Now the functions are divided into three groups, functions, information and customers. To perform a function for a customer, click on the name to select them and then click on the appropriate button. Now I'm going to open a file I created earlier that has a number of customers and inventory items already set up. To create an invoice, select the customer in the customer list and then click on the add invoice button. The customer code and name is displayed in the top left corner with the invoice number immediately below. The next numerically sequenced invoice number is generated but you can change it by typing in a new number in the box. The invoice date at the top of the next column defaults to the current date per the computer, but you can change this if needed as well. The invoice options are then displayed. 
The options are order invoice, which is a standard invoice, quotations, hold open, which creates an invoice but doesn't allow it to be finalised, and finalised. That indicates the invoice has been completed and issued to a customer. The PO number allows you to reference your invoice to a purchase order. If payment has been received at the same time the invoice is created, click on the Cash Invoice checkbox. When the invoice is finalised, a receipt will be created automatically for the amount owing and the amount will be processed in accordance with the cash invoice settings in options. OK, now we can add some items to our invoices. I'm using a small screen resolution to keep the video size down, but if you're using the normal resolution, you'll see a lot more lines in the items area. Adding items can be done in two ways. You can either type in the details or you can select the item code or descriptions for items in your inventory list. The maximum description is 250 characters. That's a lot, but if you need more, go to the next line and type in the next description. OK, now we can add a message. And when we're finished, click on the finalise button. If we click on the save button, it will save the invoice for editing but not allocate it into the customer's account as an amount outstanding until it is finalised. Click on the print button to print your invoice. You can also email the invoice or save as an electronic invoice at this time. Once the invoice has been saved or finalised, click on the cancel button to exit the invoice. If you have finalised the invoice, when you click on the Customer Inquiry, you will see the invoice listed in the customer's account. OK, we've looked at how to create a file, how to add a customer, some of the options, and how to create an invoice. One final thing is to process the money in when your customer pays you. Select the customer and click on the Money In button. You can change the date if necessary and also record a reference number. The current balance that the customer owes you will display. You can select an auto apply option. Earliest date first is the default option and this applies the money to the oldest invoices first. Lowest invoice number first applies the receipt in sequence starting with the lowest invoice number. Or don't use auto apply and allocate the amounts manually. Select the option you want, record the amount of the receipt in the amount received box and press the enter key on your keyboard. Alternatively, you can record the amounts in the amount received column next to each invoice. To transfer the amounts to an account in the cash flow manager section, Click on the checkbox for Transfer to Cashflow Manager. Select the bank account and if you want to combine it into a single transaction, click on Group as one entry. Click on the Continue button and now you can allocate the amount to the appropriate allocation column. Click on the Save button. So this will help you get started in the Invoice section. Of course, you have reports that help you manage your business and track the amounts that customers owe you. You can also use the program to track invoices for suppliers and this section is very similar to the customer invoice section. Refer to the user guide or online help for more information or go to our website for more training videos.